Alright, so finally found some time here to uh, give my thoughts on the PBC on NBC card that took place um, earlier yesterday now. Uh, Andre Fanfara versus Joe Smith Jr. Um, in the main event. In spite of the fact that I, I personally, I, the fight I was looking forward to most was Juan Carlos Payano versus Rashid Warren Part 2. But I'll get to that in a second. Fanfara versus Joe Smith, man. It was a big shocker, but Smith pulled off a crazy upset first round knockout in a round where he was really badly hurt from what I saw by Fonfara. Fonfara caught him early. He was catching him with heavy shots from the opening bell. And to me, it would seem like it was a matter of time before Joe Smith was going to crumble. But as he was hurt, Fonfara came forward looking to finish him off. And he came forward pretty much standing straight up and got clipped with a huge right hand that he just didn't see. It, he was, it was almost like he was looking to the right and the right hand was coming from the left side of him. And he just got hit upside the head. Um, you know, the, the like between the uh, the orbit and the and the temple area. Um, got laid flat. His balance was all over the place. Joe Smith uh, quickly finished him thereafter. You know, he got up. He was still wobbly. He landed several more power shots. Laid him out flat again. Ref called it off. I thought the stoppage, you know, was a little bit fast. I thought he probably could have given him at least a 10 count. He probably would have made it up by then but he looked like he was in bad shape just overall his balance was all over the place he just got caught perfectly with a perfect shot and then right after in the follow-up smith managed to hammer him with some some more power shots so smith pulled off one of the biggest upsets of the year i mean there's been a, a few upsets now though there's, there's been a few upsets it probably would have been the upset of the year if it wasn't for the likes of uh Jezero corrales over takashi uchiyama as well as um jama cosmero versus um i'm not run wrong uh, which were bigger upsets by comparison, but this is definitely you know top five material right here. Uh, Byron Rojas versus uh, Hecky Butler is another one up there, but he pulled off a huge upset. It's looking like he's likely to be the next uh, uh, opponent, next contender for Adonis Stevenson's title. Um, I imagine that Adonis Stevenson will probably be able to get him out of there uh, fairly quickly, but you never know. This guy has huge power. He showed it right then and there. Uh, he managed to rock Fonfar and hurt him extremely badly. Pretty much finish him off uh, right after he had him hurt. So it's one of those things where if Stevenson isn't on, uh, isn't on point, isn't as sharp as he could possibly be, and doesn't have his defense in gear, um, and depending on who knows if um, if his age may be catching up to him at some point soon, uh, he may be in trouble against a guy like Joe Smith that just you know can crack. Period. Point blank. Um, the, of course, now the uh, again to the co-feature Juan Carlos Payano versus Rashid Warren for Payano's WBA title. Warren managed to pull off uh, the the victory in the rematch. Uh, a lot of people thought that Warren won the first fight. Personally, I thought that Payano uh, just edged it. But this fight, actually, I had uh, Payano winning as well. But Warren managed to get the majority decision. It was a close fight. Um, from what I saw on Twitter and you know some of the people that I was conversing with, uh, a lot of people had it very close as did I. And honestly, I thought um, Warren was doing well early on, but I thought he kind of gassed out like towards the mid to late rounds, about like round five through nine is where he, he gassed real badly. I thought Payano was really busting up pretty badly. I thought he was maybe can't even come close to dropping him a couple of times there. But Warren managed to kind of catch a second win right on time in the championship rounds, 11 and 12 especially. And he, he finished off strong, managed to nick those rounds, and I think those rounds were sorely, sorely needed. After all the rounds he had given away in the uh, the mid to late area rounds, um, it was a pretty good fight. Um, not the most entertaining, not the most um, uh, bombastic fight. Not even necessarily as entertaining as the first fight, where I thought the shifts, the ebbs and flows of uh, of tide were a lot more consistent throughout each individual round. With this one, it was like the rounds were more clear about who won each one. It's like uh, Warren started off fast, doing really well. Pionel, uh started carrying the mid to late rounds a lot more. Then Warren finished off strong, as opposed to the first fight where it was really tit for tat almost every single round. Um, but Warren managed to pull it off, managed to finally get a championship. Uh, you know, he's a fighter that's worked uh, very hard for a very long time. You know, he managed. He wasn't able to get any medals at all in the three Olympics that he participated in, 2004, 2008, and 2012, which is really unfortunate for him. He didn't, he didn't even manage to get a win, which really sucks. And then he wound up, you know, kind of uh, falling just short in his initial title shot, but he managed to come up victorious in this one. So, you know, congratulations to Rashid Warren for that. Um, it would be interesting to see if the WBA winds up immediately mandating 
him fighting the super champion for the WBA, which is Jamie McDonald. Um, it'd be a solid fight. Uh, probably one of the best fights that could be made at Bantamweight between those two. Um, I think it would be, you know, en as entertaining as any fight on uh, PBC has been. Uh, you know, McDonald showed in the, the two fights with uh, Tomoki Kameda that he's a, he's a fun fighter to watch. Warren showed that, at least in the first fight against Payano. And I think that the, 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 the style clash, I think, would be a very entertaining one. Um, McDonald's he throws a lot of punches. He uh, has a high work rate. Especially for a guy that's as tall and um, lanky as he is. You know, he's a guy that you'd imagine would just kind of um, box on the outside. But he boxes on the outside and on the inside, really, with um, good high volume. Just a solid work rate. Warren's a bit more of a fighter that fights in spurts a little bit more on the um, explosive, spurty end. But I think that's a solid matchup, and I'd love to see it um, ASAP, especially. Um, for Payano, um, it'd be nice to see him get a, a shot at any of the other champions. I mean, I know Shinsuke Yamanaka is probably going to be fighting Anselmo Moreno coming up because he's his mandatory. But a uh, rematch between Payano and Moreno would be excellent if Moreno manages to come up victorious in that fight, which I think he will. Um, there's also Lee Haskins out there, although he has probably a little bit um, bigger money fights um, with uh, some of his countrymen in particular. And then uh, Suryan Fuso, or Pongalang Sosingyu, rather, at, um, who is the... The, the WBL champion um, is always out there too. Um, be solid fights for Piano, or if uh, if they want to toss Kameda back in the ring, Kameda versus Piano would be an excellent fight, I think. Um, love to see him back on the PPC airwaves uh, as soon as possible. Then we also had uh, Erickson Lubin versus Daniel Sandoval. A little bit of a stay busy fight for the most part. You know, Lubin's still a prospect, still kind of uh, steadily matching him up, stepping him up to a certain degree. Uh, this guy was a little bit of an awkward, taller fighter. He was having some trouble with him early. Um, was going to the body pretty well, but was having some trouble with the height and the reach advantage that Sandoval had over him. But Lubin managed to um, eventually kind of cut the ring off, uh, cut him down, and basically, you know, stop him. I thought it was an early stoppage, though. Uh, he was cracking him with some big shots when the ref stopped it, but, I mean, Sandoval hadn't gone down. He was getting hit, you know, clean, heavy shots, but he was still in it, at least. You know, it's one of those things where... The, the, you can't necessarily say a guy's completely out. It didn't look like he was completely out on his feet. He definitely looked like he was hurt and wobbled, but not completely out of it. The way, you know, like you'd see a guy with his head snapping back and his eyes are rolling back in his head and the whole nine like that. But, I mean, a solid victory for Lubin. And then, um, I mean, the other, the other fights that, that were on the undercard were, I mean, all right. Um, uh, let me see. Martin versus Abreu. Um, I thought that Abreu probably should have got the decision in that fight. Um, Martin, I didn't think really uh, should have won that fight. I mean, I thought Abru uh, started off really well, in spite of the fact that it was really a dirty, ugly fight from Abru, just uh, you know mugging him, mauling him, wrestling him, uh, being real dirty. But uh, Martin started to pick it up um, in the later rounds of that fight, and um, he managed to you know pull it off incidentally. Um, although I thought that Abru probably should have uh, got the decision. I basically had it even in terms of rounds, but he scored a knockdown in the, what was that, about the 6th or the 7th, and um, he wound up uh, falling short, unfortunately, but uh, I had him up by one point on my card, but, I mean, that's all for the uh, the PBC card, that was a pretty solid card, I mean, it wasn't necessarily, oh yeah, for almost forgot about uh, Hugo Centeno versus, um, what's the, what was his name, Asiege, Asiege, uh, damn it, what the heck was this guy's name? Now I gotta look it up, man. <laughs> it's a trouble when you're doing this a lot. Masiej Sulechki, Sulechki versus uh, Hugo Centennial Jr. Uh, Sulechki looked really good, man. Um, just a solid, uh, dominant performance from Sulechki. Um, I, I, they only gave one round to Centennial, which was the first round, and even then, you know, you could have easily given it to Sulechki. He pretty much dominated all the way through. Um, got hit with a couple of body shots here and there that um, managed to slow him down, but otherwise, I mean, he was pretty much. Uh, Working well off the jab, hooking off the jab, you know, throwing power shots uh, whenever he felt like it. Uh, broke Centennial down. Had him very hesitant to throw in the mid to later rounds. And eventually um, knocked him out in the 12th round. I mean, you can't really get much more of a dominant performance than that. Uh, just winning pretty much every round and finally stopping him in the final round. Uh, solid victory for Sulechki. Um, so sure, he's probably going to be in line for a title shot at some point soon. Considering both these guys were ranked by the WBO in the top 15. Um, of course, WBO middleweight champion being Billy Joe Saunders. Um, so I could potentially see him in uh, 
sometime in the future fighting him or you know who knows maybe get a a, a big money fight against somebody like uh Gennady Golovkin. I'd, I imagine something like that would be probably a little bit more in the um, in the realm of possibilities for somebody like Sulecki. Um especially by virtue of the fact that I mean, you know, being a, a fighter from Poland, the big Polish uh, population in in uh, Chicago, and considering the fact that you know they're they're kind of uh, reeling a little bit from the uh, the loss of uh, from far as well as the recent loss of Spielka, he could maybe uh, fit in there. Uh, maybe get Golovkin versus Sulecki in in uh, in Shot Town, and um, you know bring down the house it'll be pretty uh, be a pretty live crowd live uh, interesting type of a card um but that's pretty much all for the pbc card and i'll hit you guys on the next one peace